Hey, what is up guys? And today we're going to be taking a look at a new frame from Teensley. And this is called the Teensley X50, which is a 5-inch quadcopter. And I also have the Teensley X60, which is a 6-inch as well. So we have the 5 and the 6-inch version. Now, previously, we've I've seen some of Teensley's stuff and it was great. However, unfortunately, I can't really say the same about this one just yet. At least in terms of quality flight characteristics, I can now answer that in this video. But let's take a look at this. So currently what I have assembled is the Teensley X50, which is the 5-inch quadcopter. And it does have 4mm arms and 2mm every other plate on board is basically a 2mm. Now if we take a look at this, before going in depth, let's take a look at some of the components. Now I said, okay, well when I picked up the X50 and I checked some of the cuts and the chamfering and everything done, I said, okay, maybe, maybe I had a bad batch, but I can also see the same on the X60, which is the six inch version, which is not really great manufacturing process or a cutting process. However, the arms are really rigid. So that can mean, that can mean it's good quality carbon, but the manufacturing sucks, or it can just mean both of them are just not really good. But this is around a $20 frame, which is pretty decent, but I expected a little bit more since it was Teensley. So let's take a look at some of the things. Now, first of all, the packaging they did was not really great because most of the boards got scratched inside. Uh, this is why you see Gip RC uh, basically vacuum sealing every little component so they don't have this issue. So when you get your quadcopter or your frame that you paid for, uh, you're not going to get these nasty scratches. And there's a lot of... Uh, what is it called? Delamination and threading in some of the cuts. I mean, not really hardcore delaminations, but it's it's on the exit holes, what I can see. This is some things you take note of when you're purchasing this. They do obviously provide you with everything you need. However, there's another thing that I'd highly recommend, is if you have an ICM gyro, I don't recommend you pick up this frame either, because it does have some flex, and the way that it's all connected together is not very stable. So you can tighten these nuts as hard as possible here, but if you try to tighten the nut that's going into the standoff here, I mean, if you're trying to screw that's going into the standoff, you're going to strip the standoff in the middle because this is aluminum. This is crappy aluminum. Uh, that's how they are, you know. But so they don't provide you with any sort of other locking, arm locking mechanism, such as a, a self-locking nut in a way. So all they do provide you is with four nuts up here and um, that that's all it is. To secure it uh, play the cuts are pretty good I mean not the the quality of the cuts but the precision of the cuts seems to be good because there's no play which is really nice to see flex there is flex even though we're having a two millimeter and another two millimeter plate up here there is still some flex I can feel it but the arms are really rigid but the body in here is what's flexing um, the amount of space inside looks pretty good actually let's let's take a quick measurement here so the amount of space inside is around 30 millimeters minus these nuts, which I would say around two millimeters. So you probably get around a good 27 millimeter of stack height. It's 28, but I'm just saying 27 just to be worst case scenario. So you're probably getting around 27 millimeters of stack height. The camera is pushed out a little bit more. And uh, what's so cool about the camera, it is protected, which is really nice, especially even with the newer newer cams with the bigger lenses. It's just about perfect. So that's really nice in that perspective. But that's only assuming if you have it tilted up to this angle right here. So that's something to take note of as well. It's supposed to be, I guess they're going for some kind of ultralight with being a little bit more massive. I really don't know what the hell they're trying to do here. It looked nice on the post, but in real life, it's kind of looking kind of weird. I was really looking forward to building this. I wanted to build it with the F722 Dell RC flight controller and one of the new rockets but I don't think I'll be doing that right now uh, they also provide you with this little external tail piece adapter uh, for basically like an SMA or an LED if you wanted to they actually give you two I don't know if they do this on both yeah they do they do this with every single one so they give you two just in case you might break one I guess uh, they're exactly the same so that's I guess that's nice in that perspective uh, you do have some kind of a GoPro mounting solution as you can tell here you're probably able to route like a strap through here and then hold it up that way which is really nice and this is a bottom mount battery frame as you can tell here so overall the frame looks decent I mean for 20 bucks I mean nowadays for 20 bucks you can kind of get a little bit more than this so the arm width is around 12 millimeters so that's kind of nice to see uh, it won't fit most ESC sizes, so it's kind of thin. You might have to go for a thin ESC or a 4-in-1 ESC, so you don't have the ESC hanging out off the side here. Mounting holes looks like it's going to fit anything from 22XX to 23 and possibly even more. So that's good in that perspective. Mounting holes, this might be a 20 by 20 right there, so you can possibly mount 20 by 20 and just move the nuts to the 30 by 30 stack area. That's a possibility. 
but um, I don't know. I haven't tested that, but maybe I will test that. I don't know yet. So overall, you know, I'm, I'm very disappointed in just the, 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 the cuts here. This is from the six inch version. So it's not just one that I got was was not a great quality. It's probably hard to see that, but it's it's uh, it's really rough here. Look at that right there. Um, hopefully you guys can kind of see that it's it's uh, the, all I can say is the cuts isn't really nice and I think Teensley uh, to be honest kind of just half-assed it with this one but um, overall it's it's a pretty cheap little $20 frame it might perform good I'm not saying this is not going to perform good but I would highly recommend to avoid setting it up with a sensitive gyro like something with an ICM gyro this is from my personal experience but other than that if you're probably using an MPU 650 gyro and you're looking for something different and it's on a little budget this might be the one for you uh, that's going to be completely up to you so right now let's just get its weight and then take one last look at this guy so it's 82 grams, so it's pretty good. It's trying to be on the mid-level weight of a frame. Um, and overall, it just feels like Teensley could have done a little bit more in my opinion. However, we can increase the structural integrity here if we do get another M3 screw, because we do have another hole here for the 30 by 30 stack and add a smaller nut next to this nut. And that'll give it a little bit more stability and rigidity and possibly reduce the chances of having a lot of vibrations. Now the vibration is just a cur current theory of mine. It's not real, but it's, it's, it's very possible here. But the, you know, the precision of the cuts seems to be really good. Um, the plates here that slide in are not really playing. Oh, actually not one of them is playing here. So this one is sort of playing as you can tell here. But once you put the camera in, that'll hold it in place. So this side is just playing a little bit more than this side here. And let's just take a look at the back plate. Back, back plate looks like it's pretty rigid. So yeah, uh, so this is going to conclude it for my current review of the Teensley X50 and X60. So yeah, like I said, I expected a little bit more from Teensley here. And um, overall, it does look like a little nice frame, but that's all I can currently say. And um, yeah, well, that's concluded for my review, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. And let me know your, your thoughts about this frame down in the comments. And if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.